I'm Helen Beckett, editor of the Business Value Exchange at Discover London. And we're about to embark on a look at the vision of the future, a look at the role of smart factories in connected manufacturing. Enterprise Services has a vision of connected devices, supply chains, and networked factories. And here to talk us through all that is Jacques Spey. Hi, Jacques. Hello, Helen. It's great to have you here. Um, you're going to talk us about the work that Enterprise Services is doing in building a converged plant infrastructure. What exactly does that mean? What are the components? Okay, so let's take one step back because why are we doing this? The converged plant infrastructure is part of a larger vision, which is also known as Industry 4.0, the fourth revolution, the next step in manufacturing capability. And that is very much technology driven. And CPI, the converged plant infrastructure, is one essential part to make this a reality. And actually what is happening in the manufacturing industry is more digital components in manufacturing. So just the physical goods alone are not giving you the utmost value. So you need to go and have a digital representation. CPI is, uh, I think the best description is the foundation for a smart factory. So that means you must be able to connect to all the machinery in a factory, all the equipment. Mm -hmm. So the traditional operations technology world and the information technology world get connected. And networking, uh, being networked in the factory uh, between machines, but also equipment and parts in the factory, that's what CPI enables. So basically connecting everything and starting to be able to optimize how you manufacture. So converged plant infrastructure gives you the foundation for such a smart factory. So here we have the foundations, there's a lot more going on as well. It's about optimizing supply chains, expanded supply chains, Definitely. connecting people, processes, widgets, everything that goes on in a factory floor. Mm -hmm. What role in particular does data analytics play? Well, actually by having this connectivity, it allows you to capture more data than ever before. Now that's maybe not the critical part. The critical part is what can you do with the data? So the things that we are seeing and helping our customers to do is find patterns in operation. How am I operating my factory? Can I maybe find patterns to improve performance in the factory? And uh, can I find ways to maybe have more flexibility in the way I operate? If I have multiple products in my factory, how can I optimize how they are being produced? And data is the tool to help me decide that. And even in a more advanced state, I will be able to automate some of that based on the data. So data is a, a tool, it's the fuel almost, helping people connect processes up, be more efficient, more flexible, bring in other partnerships, presumably. This brings us nicely onto this uh, question of the virtual Fort Knox. Yeah. It sounds really intriguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it sits on top of the converged plant infrastructure. That's correct. What's the virtual Fort Knox doing? The virtual for Knox gives you basically two things. First of all, it gives you a functional layer that after connecting all these machines, you can work with the data in those machines, that's one. But more importantly, it gives you a marketplace. So a marketplace for new services, uh, like I want to have a dashboard for the operation of my factory. I can find that dashboard in the virtual for Knox marketplace. This marketplace is a secure marketplace, that means not just anybody can find it or access it or use it. No, it's dedicated to you or my factory. So I have my individual instance of virtual Fort Knox, allowing me to pick and select the best applications or services that I want to run. It sounds incredible. Is it a bit like an app store, a smartphone for factories? That's or? a very good analogy. So it's almost like your phone, yeah. but now you have it for your factory. And, and are, are there any examples of the things you can pick and choose from this virtual Fort Knox? Yeah, so, so I already gave you this dashboard example. Yeah. Uh, another one is uh, a classic uh, manufacturing execution system. Uh -huh. But now the individual modules of that you can uh, find in the marketplace, select, maybe try out if you like them you can then start using them continuously or you replace them with another one that you prefer maybe. So returning to the kind of broader, the, the CPI environment of the factory floor and you're connected to the cloud and all the capability that gives, what are the new kinds of things that you can now do in the smart factory that you couldn't before? Well, actually a lot is data driven. So the data capability we just discussed before is a key uh, capability that is new. Data have been around, but the data processing capability has really exploded almost in the last uh, few years. That's one. Second, why is cloud important? 
because you will not have one factory, you will have multiple factories. So how can you optimize across what is called the footprint, all my factories? That's one, that's a distributed capability. And I'm not alone in the world. I probably have suppliers that deliver me parts or components of my final product. How can I connect to them? So this global distributed capability is best enabled by a cloud architecture. So Jacques, if we return to the entire factory floor, this converged plant infrastructure again, what are some of the smart applications that are now going on in this new environment? Some are really surprised to some of our customers in the sense that they run in the cloud, for instance, which would be then be a private cloud in the CPI. Uh, as of one example, uh, cloud navigation. So we see flexibility in the production line, abandoning static production and getting AGVs, uh, guided vehicles, on the shop floor, which are flexible in routing. And this navigation algorithm actually runs in the cloud. So all the AGVs in a plant would communicate with this cloud algorithm, which allows you, for instance, to optimize routes and share that between all the AGVs or find maybe a reliability, a better reliability for a particular vehicle and spread that for all the instances. That's so that's cloud. Terrific example of the self-routing vehicles all going their own way around the factory floor, the most efficient route. And there's robots as well doing stuff, are they? They can be yeah, programmed yeah. from the cloud or? Yeah, definitely. So what we see is that uh, we have one example where we do cloud picking. So there's a, a, a bin full of parts and uh, yeah, the robot doesn't know apart, so we have to learn that to the robot. And what we do, we use a camera, uh, it does a recognition, a visual recognition of the part, and that's such a heavy compute task that we run it in the cloud. It cannot run on the robot, and we send back to the robot, hey, we spotted the part, you should pick it up in this way and transport it over to the next machine. Wow, so that's remotely programmed robots, self-driving vehicles, networked factories, distributed factories, a virtual Fort Knox. It's an amazing vision of the future. And thank you very much, Jack Spade, for sharing that with us today. The pleasure, Helen.